Hello everyone, my name is Teen Lonely, and in today's video we're going to be evaluating and analyzing the Unit 731 case. Now this case is a construct of a Japanese um, World War II um, case that circulated for quite a long time now, and um, nobody has touched base on this agenda predominantly because of it being so severe and it being so minuscule in terms of information that's on this aspect in particular. Now, looking at a broader extrapolated aspect, this case in particular is so severe that not only is it near impossible to get critical information on it without any flaws, but it's just difficult in the aspect of everyone else talking about it and everyone else promoting the wrong agendas, the wrong information. And that's completely not really what I'm not doing in today's video. I'm going to be evaluating it critically and I'm going to be delving into the depths of what this is and giving it a constructive introduction and sort of giving my critique on it um, in terms of severity. I wrote my piece on it um, on my uh, little handy dandy phone. Um, it's 2.11 right now. We'll most likely get done with this around, I don't know, like 25, give or take a bit longer. Um, so without further ado, let's just get into just a reference as to what, let's say primary A would show you and me primary B shows you in terms of information and um, ethical analogy, right? Now, these are just basic stock images on the case, right? Um, if, you, if you guys are completely oblivious to what it is, it's sort of just a crime agenda that's been pushed across World War II, just a circulating um, uh, experimental um, conduct of testing um, subjects, testing Japanese subjects with harsh chemicals, assaulting them, abusing them, and soliciting um, minors and soliciting young individuals. As you can see, this graphic image of a individual with a skewer puncturing right through a baby like it was absolutely a little turkey stock um you have all these pictures although these pictures although they're like like they're so presentable and they're so visualized that doesn't make it resonate with the information in a way um i did i did see an instant of this book but this book doesn't sort of cover the entirety of it it's a good book don't get me wrong but it doesn't cover the severe aspects of it and the entirety of it it sort of just scrapes the surface of what it is i mean if this topic was ambiguous i'm pretty sure that there would be you know a right a right um, letter of information or right amount of information that's factual that's not the case when there's a min when there's minuscule amount of information out there fuck I drop my phone when there's small amounts of information out there everyone's gonna try to fabricate it because they're gonna want to push that same agenda as much as they can because they want the attention right that's not the case shout out to plague moth before I start shout out to plague moth for for sort of inspiring this video the majority of my videos as you all know are inspired by plague moth and i just i just i just have a a a level of respect towards him primarily because he's just such a good individual in general he's just so like i just love him because he's so humble he's so like biased on terms of his like topics and whatnot his stances and his moral stances are just Everything he does as a human being in general, just generalizing his just scopes and perspectives, it's just great. He, he's just a great guy, and he sort of constructed my channel in a way. So a huge thank you to um, Plague Moth, and um, know this video isn't sponsored, 
Um, this video is not going to get monetized because there's going to be graphic images being presented in this video today. So um, viewer discretion is advised. Um, moving on. So over here, this is not my presentation. This is just a website that I'm going to refer to. I'm going to get to mine um, in a moment. So just pulling it up right now. This is th this is my piece on it, right? It's descriptive. It's analytic. It's 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 just delving into the depths. Um, I got the majority of my information from, um, I'd say a secondary source, something you wouldn't find on let's say I don't know DuckDuckGo or Google. This information, if you want the entirety of it, if you want the severe aspects of this topic, you're going to have the most likely find a third party or secondary source that can provide that information in particular and in specific to what you're looking for because in this substantial rate of people constantly writing these articles look there's there's two over here for reference and the two only only you know brush off the the little skimmed aspect they're the skimmed part of what it really is that's not the case moving on Inside Unit 731, Japanese Disturbing Human Experiments Program during World War II. Just to reiterate, this article in particular doesn't cover everything that I'm going to be covering. These six experiments by Unit 731 rank among some of the most horrifying war crimes ever committed. I mean, besides the Holocaust, yes. Um... Is it is it is it severe? Is it is it gruesome? Is it is it inhumane? Yes, it checks off all the boxes. It checks everything, all of the above. It's pretty bad um, compared to other cases. Can't speak on that yet. I'm gonna have to evaluate that with you all before we before we get to the outcome. Before we get to the answer, based off of my my research and my information grasping. It's pretty bad. Now, compared to other cases, this is one of the worst. If I were to give it a level of severity, just based off of my research that I will be presenting. Nine. A solid nine. Ten being taking 93% of the population. That's a ten for me, right? That's a, that, that's a ten for me. That's A ten is... Dumping hydrochloric acid all over Japan, literally destroying everybody, leaving the the nuclear bomb, the uh, Kawasaki um, nuclear warfare, in which has happened at that time frame. Although we're not going to be getting into that, I'm just saying as reference, that's a ten, and this is a nine. You can see in terms of severity where they touch, where they reach, they're pretty similar. Unit 731, personal conduct, a bacteriological trial upon test subjects in Nongan, I'm sorry to, if I'm pronouncing that wrong, county of northeast China's Jilin province, November 1940s. World War II ended, what, 1945? I don't want to say something dumb, but 1945 is, in, uh, is when World War II has come to a end. Now, a bacteriological trial is a is a alteration where these individuals conduct these experiments on these individuals that may be suffering from the deficits or psychological alterations in which allow them to sort of obligate to being conducted these specific acts. Now, when these kids, or I shouldn't label them as kids, but when these families and when these communities are sort of um, forced into these camps, forced into these experimental um, agendas, right? What it does is that it sort of causes them to exhibit the same thing. What I mean by that is that everyone's sort of indoctrinated by what's going on. Everyone is in this norm, norm where they're following the same thing. Everyone's listening to the same person. They're, they're enclosed in one thing and they're being forced to, to be... A test subject I I just can't wrap my head around how fuck that is imagine imagine your family at that time being like you got to pack up we're going to an experimental camp we have nothing to do with it because they're they're gonna kill us that's literally what it is 
all these families were forced and obligated to conduct these experiments on themselves for results for their benefit for their scientific biological benefits which is just completely fucked up in my opinion now we all think it's fucked up right but what's so severe about this just, yeah yeah there's camps yeah there's been mass murders yeah there's been a substantial rate of killings and etc cetera, etc cetera. but what makes it so bad this is where this sort of introduction sort of ties into what i wrote but once again introductions will always be similar because across the vast majority of websites out there they're gonna use the same introduction that's just that mind you know what you know what i'll just read mine out and then we'll just sort of use this demographic during World War II, Jap Japan's Unit 731 was a covert biological and chemical warfare research and development unit that conducted horrific experiments on humans. The unit operated from 1937 to 1945. Once again, just to reiterate, that's when World War II ended, 1945. It started in 1937. I'm not good at math, but that's a 15-year gap. 37, hold on, 19, 30, uh, my bad, eight, 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 eight year gap, I was pretty off, but anyways, my math is not the best, um, in Japanese occupied Merchina, right, China, and is estimated to have conducted experiments on thousands of people, most mostly Chinese and Korean civilians, but also some Soviet prisoners of war. So just based off of that introduction that I gave, I'm formulating and descriptifying that the Soviet Union was a part of this agenda as well, because they were prisoners at the time being. So Russian Soviet soldiers were sort of pulled into this experiment, dragged into the ex experiment, along with foreign um, Koreans and Chinese members of the warfare. That sort of got entangled into this experiment, which is just horrific. Um, over here, it states that more than 100 million people around the world and out. Well, for first of all, there's not there 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 hasn't been a record of a hundred million around the world. It only happened in Japan. It took place in Japan with it um, occupying these individuals across different regions and different nations, right? So just right off the bat, this 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 introduction is not it. I'm not saying that the information that's providing is wrong. I'm just saying that they're not contextifying it correctly. And out of all the areas in which World War II was fought, none were active as long as what would come to be known as the Pacific Theater. In fact, Japan arguably stated the war by attacking Maraschina in 1931, and it waged a war in China by evading 1937. Now, my take on that is that I'm not sure whether that inf information is um, resonating with the case. As a whole, it's sort of just rectifying when the um, trial started and when the war was conducted at first. It's not, it's not specifying when exactly the experiments took place and when it actually arised. So just okay in my opinion now i'm not once again just to reiterate i'm not saying this information is incorrect right all i'm saying is that it's not contextified correctly it's not in chronological order it's not you know aligned that's what i'm trying to state now um Over here, we have a image of an individual suffering. Now, before we get into that, we're going to cover the second half of the case. Now, I have images over here that I would like to show. 
Um, yeah, so this one is a image of an individual that has experienced these chemical um, deficits and um, you can see the reaction there. Now, let's cover the rather severe aspects of the case by sort of indulging in the full context of what it is. Now, as I place these images, I just would like you all to sort of identify what these pictures have to offer in terms of visualize, visualizing the instant of the case being severe in that anatomy point. Okay. The experiments conducted by Unit 731 were brutal and inhumane and often resulted in the death of subjects. They included exposing people to biological agents such as plague and anthrax and studying their reactions. They also conducted the Vixic pause v v vivisections v v vivisections vivisections i oh i can't pronounce that word that's the only word i can't pronounce vivisections v vivisections which involved dissecting living people without anesthesia so i'm pretty sure you all could sort of visualize and see what that sort of would look like um Dissecting an individual, let me just put this in, a, in an analogy. If some of you have done, I don't know, grade 12 bio, then I'm pretty sure we've all dissected a frog. Now, the frog there, right, is, is, is already pre-dissected. It's dead. It's cold. Yet, we're still playing with it. Now you can see how there's a there's a sort of inhumane aspect in that because we're just picking out you know organs from a frog, yet we think that it's gruesome, but a psychopath and these unhinged in individuals who conducted these experiments on live human beings were dissecting them live with no anesthesia, so that means they felt everything in the process of being literally sold and their organs pulled out of their bodies while they're watching it happen. That is the most fucked up thing I've ever read along a sentence in the most utter, calmest way possible. I don't know. In, at this point, I may be pushing it to it's staying at a nine. We're, we're going to get deeper, but at this point, a nine is, it's, it's where it's at. In order to study the effects of the experiments on the human body, in addition to conducting experiments, Unit 731 also used prisoners for weapon testing, including testing bombs, grenades, and flamethrowers on them. They even conducted experiments on pregnant women, oh man, and infants. Once again, I'm tying in what I've stated at the beginning were they tied in families, tied in children, tied in everyone that was a part of the experiment was a part of it. They were a subject. Everyone was subjected. Everyone was obligated to be conducted by these experiments, these biological altering experiments. Nobody was left out. There was no remorse. There was no feelings. If a, if a Look at the picture I'm presenting to you right now. This is a prime pic Look how cute this little baby is. Yet, yet that kid's being experimented on. Now, just to contextify what this image, imagery sort of um, promotes and um, stipulates is that this is where the experiments are conducted. This area over here, this region over here, you could see how there's sort of factory um, chimneys. You have a lights, light pole there, some trees. Really eerie yet severe in its own way because it really shows 
how this area being so empty held all these lives, held all these joyful lives that were taken away by experiments, biological experiments that deteriorated families, communities, and people. <sighs> Moving on. In addition to conducting experiments, Unit 731 also used prisoners for weapon testing, including testing bombs, grenades, and flamethrowers on them. They, they even conducted experiments on pregnant women and infants, often resulting in the death of the mother and child. The crimes committed by Unit 731 were kept secret for many years. As the Japanese government denied the existence of the unit and its activities, it was only after World War II that the atrocities committed, atrocities, sorry, committed by Unit 731. They were revealed in the agenda of primarily um, being thorough through the testimonies of former unit members and victims. Um, as, as you know, individuals throughout this um, case were victimized. They were held accountable um, throughout the conducts and the experiments that were, you know, sort of indulged and endeavored throughout um, 1937 to 1945, which is eight year span, which is absolutely just horrid in my opinion. Now, this image over here, I like this Im image a lot because what it, what it's showing is that it shows the individuals in their in their um, hazmat suits conducting that experiment on that individual on the flatbed right there. Now, these have been recorded visually. But I'm not sure whether there's been graphical videos. There's been pictures. I have pictures, graphical pictures of this case in particular, although there's not videos of them conducting these things. Although, smash 200 likes. You know what? Smash 200 likes and we will find the video. We'll, I'll make a part two on this video. I'll, I'll make a part two on this video and it will sort of contextify the visual aspect of the entirety of this case although skimming just the top really gives us a um understanding a perspicacious insight of what it is completely and utterly um it's so moving on so well what is the legacy of unit 731 like what does it be like whole why is everyone talking about it in the first place? Unit 731 is one of the horror and tragedy the victims and their families suffered unimaginable. The pain and the trauma and, and psychiatric evaluations that have been sort of accumulated in the mind and just, just, just continuous suffering by these individuals have sort of constructed the legacy of these crimes still resonating in Japan Korea and China today our modern day society still talks about it yet